In this video, I'm going to be explaining some simple concepts that are related to gears. So to begin with, gears are important because they're able to transfer mode movement from the source, which is the motor, to other parts of the robot, like an attachment. And they're also able to change the speed and torque of a motor. And they can allow for multiple things to move under the control of one motor. So one gear can be attached to two gears, and those two gears can be attached to two separate things, allowing you to control two different types of movement with one motor. In order to fully understand gears, you must understand the difference between speed and torque. Speed is how fast something moves. So if a wheel is spinning at 60 miles per hour, it would have more speed than a wheel that's moving at 30 miles per hour. On the other hand, torque is how much force something can move. So if you're trying to lift up a 10 pound uh, dumbbell, you're using more torque than if you're trying to lift a five pound dumbbell. If you were to lift a 10 pound dumbbell twice as fast, then you would have twice the amount of speed. And when this applies to gears, it's how much of a load the gear can turn with. So if there's a large, heavy load that the gear needs to turn, then you're going to need high torque in order to do that. Because if you don't have high torque, then the gear is going to either end up breaking or it'll end up slipping and you won't be able to transfer the motion from the motor to the gear. There are a few simple types of gears that appear in this bike frame kit, and we're going to start off with these. But there are also some other gears that are included, which we will discuss later. The gears here are only able to change the speed of your movement, and they don't really affect torque that much. One exception could be the pulley, which I'll discuss in a moment. So each of these gears have different teeth, which are the little jagged points uh, coming out of each of the gears, and they have a different amount. So the first gear here has 28 teeth, whereas this uh, second gear has 20 teeth, and this gear has 12 teeth. The pulley, on the other hand, does not have teeth because it's attached with the rubber band. And uh, it's similar to a real life pulley where one wheel would be attached to another wheel via rubber band. And as one wheel turns, the other wheel will turn. Now, what's important is that the difference in numbers of teeth can be used to adjust the speed of movement. So if you have a small gear attached to a large gear, then the small gear is gonna to have to turn around a lot in order to move the big gear the same amount. And because of this, you're able to slow down the movement of the motor. Whereas you can take a large gear and attach it to a small gear and speed up the movement. Pulleys don't usually change the speed of movement because it's the same size wheel, uh, generally speaking. But if you did have a smaller wheel trying to move a larger wheel, then the same rules as gears would apply. Another important distinction that needs to be made between uh, gears with teeth and pulleys is that pulleys preserve the direction of movement. So if the motor is moving clockwise, then the... Um, second gear in the pulley system is also going to move clockwise. On the other hand, if you have two gears attached to each other that have teeth, then if the first gear is moving clockwise and the second gear is going to be moving counterclockwise. So gears with teeth shift to the opposite direction of movement when attached to another gear, whereas pulleys do not. So to find a gear ratio, you need to divide the number of teeth on the two gears to find the relative number of rotations the second gear would have to the first gear. So for example, if you had a 22 gear attached to an 8 tooth gear where the 22 gear is attached to the motor and is moving, then one rotation of the 22 gear or one rotation of the motor will re result in 20 divided by 8 rotations of the 8 tooth gear. So the 20 comes from the 20 teeth on the first gear and the 8 comes from the 8 teeth on the second gear. And dividing them gives 2.5 rotations, which is the relative number of rotations to one rotation of the 22 tooth gear. So to summarize, an 8 tooth gear is going to move 2.5 rotations for every rotation of the 20 tooth gear. And this calculation can be repeated for any combination of gears with teeth. Although this video does not cover all of the potential types of gears that you may want to use, it does cover the most common type, which are gears with teeth that are used to frequently adjust speed. But they do not adjust torque, and that's something that we will be covering later.